I've modeled a number of different types of knobs for things like stereo systems, synthesizers, musical equipment, or whatever. Uh, but um, this is a slightly different one. I'm going to use a different uh, technique to do the, the knob that you see in the thumbnail. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press 7, look down from the top, and shift A, curve path. Bring that in and just bring it down there. And then I'm going to add a mirror in the X and in the Y. And then I'm going to bring in a circle. It doesn't matter how many vertices. That circle is just going to as, act sorry, as a guide. All right. So I'm going to come in to this one. And I'm going to start placing these points. But this one is going to be sort of opposite this one. You'll see why in a bit. And I'm just going to place these so that I can you know, use that circle as a guide. And I don't want these to necessarily overlap. I want there to be a little bit of space in between them. All right, so we're just going to try to follow the circle. And I won't spend too much time on this getting it exact, so, so you'll get the idea of how to do this. Something like that. All right, then I'm going to look from the front and go back in edit mode and take this point here and pull it up. So this knob is going to come down and it's going to slope like that. Okay, so it's pretty much a circle. Let's get rid of that guide circle. And this is what we have. And these are not joined. And these are not joined. This is all a curve with the, mir with the mirror on it. All right, I'm going to come to the curve dialog box and I'm going to change the resolution. Now, I've tried a few different ones and I think I'm going to go for four here. So I'm going to put that in there and then I'm going to convert to mesh. Now, I'll go into edit mode and make sure I can see my vertices. And I'm going to grab these two and F to make a face. Same thing with these two, make a face. I'm going to select these two and make a face and these two make a face. And I should say that it is somewhat trial and error in order to get the shape that you want. Now, for example, this distance. You'll see what I'm going to build. I'm going to select those edges and have to make a face. Select this one and just press F repeatedly. And that will go all the way down to the very end. I'm going to select this one and F all the way down to the end. So I get this. All right, and it should be somewhat of a circle. All right. So with that done, I'm going to go into into edit mode, look from the front, and press E to extrude, and pull down in the Z. I'm going to straighten this out, so I'll go SZ0, and just choose a, a size that you like for your knob. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is come in here, and drop an edge loop in there, Control R, and then Control B, and split it just with two, like this. And I look from the top, Take the knife tool, K. There's my middle point, so somewhere down here. Just go across, space bar, and then make sure that's selected S, Y, 0 to straighten that out. And then I'm going to take this edge and this edge. Sorry, that face and that face, E and Alt S. And I'm going to push up so that it goes down in. And we will get rid of this face. I guess I got another one in there. And now I'm going to come over to the bevel modifier. And see if it takes just the smallest bit of bevel. All right, I might bring that up and I will shade smooth. And let's put on the cavity shader and Alt N recalculate outside just in case. And I'll also put on, yeah, I will put on weighted normal and normal's auto smooth as well. So that's the shape of this knob okay i'm going to delete these faces down here actually let's do it this way let's get rid of those bottom faces so i have that and then i'm going to come in and select all that f to make a face okay i want to put my cursor in the center so i'm going to select this slightly bigger face on that side and hold down shift and select that and shift s cursor to select it so now my 3d cursor is right in the middle i'm going to bring in a cylinder 
I'll use relatively high number of vertices. I guess it's 32. Bring that down, go into edit mode, and I will scale that up for where the post comes in. And I will take this and let's collapse those or close those. Boolean, I'm going to drag that to the top and I'm going to select that. Do a Boolean there. I'm going to come in and I'm going to take that face there. I'm going to pull it down a little ways and delete that. And there is the basic part of the knob. And then what you can do if you want to is uh, you can come in here and make a little hole. So I'll drop that in an SZ0 and position that where I want. I'm going to look, that's the back. That's the back, right? Yeah, that's the back control one. I want to make a square here, control B. I'll do this and I'll roll my mouse up. Uh, let's see how I want to do this. I'll do one more like that. And then I'll take these. I'd inset and we'll you do loop tool circle. I'm going to rotate this a little bit and then I'm going to inset one more time. It doesn't really matter that much. I'll, I'll inset a little bit. I might not need those. Um, so that doesn't look too nice. Uh, but we're going to put something over that. But just before I do that, I'm going to look from the back and I want to make this look a little bit more like a like a a circle so I'm going to press GG twice for edge slide and just bring it out like this and let's go GG on that one and this one it starts to look like a stomate if you know the plant little little mouths on the leaves for carbon dioxide to come in and oxygen to come out and that'll just help relieve some of the stretching all right so I do have a hole now and so now I'll just select a circle shift S cursor to select it and then I can bring in a you know a higher poly, um, maybe a cylinder. Um, you know you could go for 18 put a subdivision on or something like that. So I'll scale that down, rotate x 90, and just just make it bigger than the hole. Uh, let's take it out though and scale it in the y a little bit. And then we can do something like um, take these, I'd inset. And then Control E bridge edge loops. Let's let's try that. Okay, maybe scale it in a little bit, and let's make sure that we don't see the other part. Yeah, I'm going to bevel these two edges here. Control B, and I'll have three. And uh, just before I do anything else, I can get rid of these back faces. Don't need those. And maybe Control One and shade smooth and just have a look at that and make sure that it fits okay and uh, inside there would be a bolt you know that would you would tighten to have it fit onto the post um, but I, I'm not going to do that and just just do that part there all right let's um, let's see the shadow won't really do much for us we can do this and look at it in different matte caps or maybe I'll choose this one. All right, and uh, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty much it. I would. I could uh, just take this thing and move it up. My three cursor back and grab another one and just rotate. You know, just so you have a, a few different things. Normally, I would use instances for this. But I'm just going to shift D and G and Alt R to reset the rotation and rotate in the X. So we see a few different parts of this. So that is that style of, uh, of knob. And if we wanted to just focus on this, and I suppose if I was going to do this in the end, I would you know apply that and I'll apply that and I'll even apply that and I'll, I'll join those together and then we could just look at that and we could see what the statistics are like on that okay so it's, it's not super low poly but not very high okay so that's that's what we get for that knob cool thanks for watching